Welcome, everyone. Welcome to PRT, Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf, and with me today is my Tony, also known as Mushu. Wow. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to make sure it goes well, you, through. You can't even like let me finish the end. You no, just start I'm talking. Cut in. I'm excited about this. Oh, my gosh. It was, this, this episode is one of excitement for me because of what we're discussing today. I think it's about time. About time. <laughs> It is literally about time. That is the whole episode. It's going to be time. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. No, folks. Uh, let's let's. We you know what. Let's do the email. Just get that out of the way. My email is doswolfman88 at doswolfman88 at gmail dot com. Doswolfman88 at gmail dot com. And send me your creepy stories. Yeah. Um. If you have any stories of anything and you want to just send it to us real quick, We're, we do have a bit of a backlog, but we'll try to get to you. As soon as possible, and uh, we appreciate everyone who does send their stories. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we thank you for sharing your encounter with us. Um, we also have a uh, merch a store set up. Store. It's in the description. You can just go if you want to support the show and you want to get something out of it. Just look through there. If you find something you want, then uh, just, just go ahead and purchase it. And we appreciate it. Thank you a lot. Yeah, it's a good way to support the show. Yeah. So if you, if you want to support the show and get something out of it, then yeah, like you said. Just uh, go to the merchandise store. We've sent, we've put links up in Paranormal Roundtable Group, Paranormal Lounge, Paranormal Encounters, and we also stuck them in Cryptid uh, Squad. Yeah, we, um, we want to Dogman think. Werewolf Discussion Group. I'm really yeah. close to people that run that group. I've put it on Venomous Fringe, um, and I've posted the link, I believe, to it's called Bigfoot. It's called Dogman Bigfoot. Researchers Roundtable. I can't remember. It's such a long name. Yeah. Lori is the is the Lori Shivers is the and uh, Michael Moran. Shout out to him. He's a good guy. Yeah, thanks. He, he he's definitely he's awesome. helpful. He, he promotes the show every time he drops, and you know it definitely helps out. We appreciate it, man. Yeah. Cryptid Squad. Yeah. And uh, the guys over at Venomous Friends, Ryan. Uh, they work with Chris and uh, what's his name uh, Sensei. Sorry, man. I mean, what's his name? But Sensei uh, VF. He's pretty cool. Those guys yeah. are pretty solid. I yeah. like them. But it's a very controversial subject, and people get heated when you start talking about dogman. Dogman. Yep. Yeah, and I even though I don't really like the term, uh, several people have since voiced that. Well, you can't change what it's already that you know. You're right. I mean, I can't. But my hometown, we never call it that. No one ever said I saw a dogman because they didn't know what a dogman was. When I say dogman, they still don't know what you're talking about. Now, when you say mm-hmm. cadejo. I'm the Lobo or Werewolf, they know what you're talking about. But yeah. They don't know what the freaking heck a dog man is. So you can sit there and say dog man, and, and they're like, what is that? Because you know, it, it, it conjures up, and for people who don't know, it conjures up the image of some sort of like Labrador, like dude who looks like a dog or like do- a dog boy in a circus or something. I've had yeah. people tell me that, literally. And like one of my cousins, she was just like, what is a dog, man? That sounds mm-hmm. silly. Like, she didn't even know what it was. And it was just like, you know, and everybody kind of laughed about it. Like, it was some kind of circus freak thing or something. And I'm like, no, it's what people see, you know. And one of my other cousins was very poignant and was like, uh, they look like wolves, dude. They don't look like... <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yes. Like, yes, they, they look like wolves. and They absolutely do. 100%. And uh, the word dog, man, makes me think of like a golden retriever running around on yeah, two legs. Yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't sound... It doesn't sound correct. But it is what it is. It was a name that was there from uh, Michigan, mm. and it just kind of stuck. stuck. It stuck and to so it, now we're we're stuck dealing with this silly name. But we're not here to disparage the name of these creatures. All I know is that they exist. I the problem is, I think the name they exist because I've yeah, seen one. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't mean to interrupt you right there, but I was going to say that the problem is like also with the name is like it does kind of take away some of the fer- ferociousness of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, it, and and people who've really truly encountered these things, I'm not saying that people that have encountered them and just and just think that they're great and lovable creatures, whatever, that they're lying. I'm not saying that they're lying. I'm just thinking that you're lucky that you came across the one percent that doesn't seem aggressive and doesn't yeah. seem now people will always point to the fact that the, there's people that live to tell their tale. Well, the kill rate of any predator is not going to be a hundred percent. So, yeah. and and then also, you know, uh, if you've spent time in Africa, you you can attest to this. If you come across a clan of hyenas or a pack of 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 a, of a uh, uh, what's it called lions, uh, pride, pride, pride yeah. they, they they might just not even be interested in you because they're not hungry. Yeah, and and if that's how it is with predators, people can go you know diving in the ocean with killer whales and great whites, and they're like they didn't hurt me. That doesn't mean. That they that they're not 
they're they're gentle animals. You know what I mean? Yeah. That just means that it wasn't hungry. It wasn't interested in you at that time. Also, the, a lot of those creatures are ambush predators, and they want to get this element of surprise. So once they see you seeing them, then they're, like, they're oh, not well. going to. Yeah, it's too yeah, much it's, hassle. It's too much now. It's like okay. Yeah. So the problem is, I, I think, is like you can't just base a uh, behavioral status on an entire species based on a certain amount of you know a, a certain yeah. incident that you have. So just because a certain group of them is real friendly and bake cookies with you doesn't mean they all will. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I want to talk about the dog man thing. H- here's what I want to do today. I want to talk and I'm going to tell you a couple of stories, but I want you to listen to what I'm telling you. Okay. When I, there was a, it was a police officer who's now deceased. Okay. When he died uh, a few, few years back. I'm not going to give his name because his family still lives in, in and around that area from my hometown. And this is, you know, and I don't, I don't want a big controversy here, but I'm going to, I'm going to say this. I've been holding it to my chest for a long time. Me and Scorpion were working at the barbecue cook-off several years ago, probably 10 years ago now, maybe even longer than that. I think, yeah, I was thinking it was about 10 years ago. We were working the barbecue cook-off and there was a police officer who retired and it was me, Scorpion, and another security guard who I'm not going to give his name away, but I've known him for years and years. And he worked for me for several years. And during the barbecue cook-off, which happens in July, this guy, um, this former police officer, we began talking. Now, he's one of the people who I had told my encounter to, who believed me when I had the encounter. Because something had happened to him early in his career, back in the early 60s, he said that he had been a young police officer and that there were a series of murders that took place. Now, they're not listed as murders, and they're not listed as murders uh, in our hometown. What happened, there's a rail yard in Taylor. It's like a like an interchange because Taylor was a, was a, it's just nothing but cotton, you know, especially to the south and to the to the west of Taylor. It was all cotton land, and people would, and, and so they would ship the cotton d- different directions, you know, through these railroads. So there were people that would ride the rails. They called them rail riders. They were basically hobos, bums, yeah. that would travel from place to place, you know, getting a little bit of work what they could or whatever. Uh, some of them were just drunks. You know, they were just bums and they would, they would ride the, the, in the rail, the box cars from city to city. Travel with the train. Just, just traveling, yeah, with the train. And th- there were some that, that, uh, would be caught, uh, by the night watchmen in the rail yards and they would be rousted out, whatever. And, and, and well, one of the guys that was doing his rounds at night back in the early sixties, according to this former police officer who is now gone. He said that one night that one of these uh, night watchmen opened up one of the boxcars and saw a scene of carnage. Like there was somebody that had been just torn apart. And they listed it as a homicide, but the investigators, there there were state investigators, supposedly, you know, this is what he said, supposedly, that that there were state and, and county investigators that came down and talked to the, the the police officers that 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 answered the call mm-hmm. and they were told to be quiet they were told not to talk about it they were told that it you know that it didn't happen in the rail yard and they're like well where do you think it happened they go we don't know where it happened but it didn't happen here and they told him do you understand that this did not happen here it did not happen they're real specific about it very being specific very... it didn't happen in our county it didn't happen in our city probably didn't even happen in our state and th- there were three different, over the course of two years, it happened three different times. Now, according to what this guy told me and the two other guys, that what he believed, it, it, he had seen de- depredation like from coyotes. Mm-hmm. Predation, you know, from coyotes, whatever. He said that it looked like if you if you took a giant coyote or like a wolf, you know, and turned it loose on somebody and it just chewed them up. One of them in particular, he said it looked like the guy had been put through a blender. He said that, those are his words. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what he. Th- he looked right at us and was telling us this. Now he had he had a little bit to drink. Mm-hmm. You know, he had drank a little bit. 
and he was telling us this. And so he, but he had not told me this back when I had my encounter and me and my friend had what happened to us, happened to us. So, he, wait, so you met him before? You, you this, yeah, this guy was a, 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 yeah, a cop. Yeah. Oh, he was okay. a cop. Yeah. And, and so he would, but that night we started talking about it and we were sitting where some of the sightings have actually happened in that area and, and, and near the hiking bike. And we were sitting in the park and, and we were posted up in different spots around the barbecue cook-off. And uh, Scorpion made a joke. I think it was what, I think it was him that said something about, I hope a dog man doesn't get me. And this p- particular retired police officer turned around and was like, what'd you say? And he says, I hope, I, I believe this is how it started. It was joking between them two. Mm-hmm. And he said, what, what, did, what did you say? And he's like, I hope a dog man doesn't get me. He goes, I don't know about no dog man, but you better watch out because there are werewolves out here. And Gary kind of laughed. Mm-hmm. And the other guy kind of laughed. And he was like, you think I'm kidding? And Gary's like, no, I know. Wolf's told me some stories. And when he goes, Wolf told you his story. He goes, but I got a lot of stories. I got stories that'll make the hair stand up on your butt. And so that, I believe, was the beginning of it. But he, and if I remember correctly, he didn't start talking about it right then. It was when he went off to one of the little camps and began imbibing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then when he came back, he began to tell us. Now, what he told me that day, he said that he had never even told his family what he told us. And I think he told me just because of what happened that I had, what I had witnessed and what I had seen. And I wouldn't talk about it even, you know, I wouldn't, you know, talk about it if he hasn't, he wouldn't already gone. Yeah. So he, he basically told me that these people that were killed, that ended up in the rail yard there in Taylor, that that, that it looked like an animal had done it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that he had not ever seen this creature that people had described, like one of my distant cousins of a distant relative that, that happened to um, chase her, uh, talked about her story, uh, on Dogman encounters and what happened to me and my, my best friend and what happened to my sister's bo- ex-boyfriend. Down to your, uh, other friend, the one we just found yeah. out about. The what? The one we just found out about. Um, oh yes. Recently. Yes. Uh, the guy who does the cell phone repair. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, him and Sean, Sean actually, um, he owns a gun store there in Taylor, and, he, and he's pretty open about it. Like, Okay, cool. Yeah, he's not like going to shy away from if you talk to him about it. I mean, he, you can talk to him about his experience. Folks, there are a lot of people in my hometown in that, in that, that have seen these things, you know, but now there's all these, like, I guess you want to call them hipsters moving out there. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a definitely a different town. Yeah, when you go there now, they kind of look at you sideways and don't know whether or not you're a local that's to be trusted or if you're one of these people that have come out of Austin but not really from Austin. They're from Illinois, California, whatever. Out of state. Yeah, out of state. And they have settled in there and now they're going there and they're like, oh, look at this neat little rustic town. Now there's been movies filmed in Taylor. Yeah. Transformers, Transformers, Hotspot. Uh, there's the, the what's it called? The Lions uh, with Robert Duvall. What's his, what's it called? Uh, Secondhand Lions was filmed oh, in that area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That whole area. Uh, a bunch of movies. Stuff has been filmed. So people go there and like, oh, it's a very rustic, nice little old town, but they don't know that there's a history of these creatures. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like an unspoken thing. They don't really talk about it a lot to uh, to outsiders. And um, some people just don't know about the history. I mean, uh, as if, you know, but the locals there, you know, like I took my wife out to Copeland. It's outside of Taylor. And we heard what I I can, I clearly believe this dog man calls sounds. There was this big mean dog that came running up toward our truck, and mm-hmm. then, then we 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 park by this old school in Copeland, and we hear the, the those howls coming out of the, that bottom land. And this dog, this big dog, my wife can attest to this. It turned and it ran. It turned and it ran, and it ran back until like and got in front of a house and was like just cowering in front of the door. And my wife was just in shock. She was like, "What is that?" And I was like, "That's the sound of these creatures." Mm-hmm. I fully believe that. And now, if you go further out of of that area near Hoxie and Byersville and that, and you, you get stories about other weird stuff like cats and stuff, which a lot of people believe that this stuff comes from some sort of supernatural origin, which it may. I think a lot of people believe that they're werewolves, you know? I don't know what I believe 100%. I've argued vehemently with people who just 100% say they're all flesh and blood and that's all there is to it. These things do too many things that are supernatural, at least to us. Yeah. But you know what is supernatural to a primitive civilization could really just be science to us. 
So what they're doing could be very advanced, and we just don't get get, get it. It's just like magic yeah. to us. You know I, mean, I mean, if you go back in time to the lighter, you'd be considered, you know, a fire mage or whatever. Yeah. You go back and you're like, behold my power. I can make fire. Yeah. yeah. But, but the, yeah, I guess so. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's all on how you look at it. I know that these people, that, that the bodies that were found back in the 60s in these rail cars or in, um, the, rail, the railroad uh, cars, whatever, I don't think they were done by a person. And I think that there was a reason why the police were told not to talk about it and that it didn't happen there. And that they just they just chalked it up as like you know they were killed somewhere else and then they were they were brought into the yeah because you can't investigate something like that right um, because it would be out of state I mean so yeah you would just or, have or, to... or so it'd be listed as like you know just just uh, whatever um, mm-hmm. an accident or it could be listed as an animal attack I don't know mm-hmm. it just seems like you you wouldn't have to deal with a lot of the red tape if you just say like oh since it didn't happen here we can't really claim oh, yeah so you it. don't have to there's no record to keep of it yeah. Now, here's the other side of it. I believe this man. I, I, he was always a friendly guy and was always very polite and very a very good cop. I have no reason to doubt him mm-hmm. and think that he was making up stories. Maybe he was. Maybe he was just trying to get a good scare out of us. You know, we're sitting around, you know, you know working on the, on the edges of the barbecue cook-off in the dark. And so maybe he was trying to scare us. You know, but I don't think that's the case. I really don't. Now, you can say that maybe you think that's what it was. No, I mean. He did like to joke around yeah. and, and stuff, but at that moment, I didn't really see joking on his face. I didn't think that he was making a joke. Uh, and especially with how, like, the whole thing went down, it just seemed kind of weird for him to, because uh, Scorp said dogman. He didn't say werewolf. Yeah. He said dogman. And this guy's like, well, I don't know what that is, but there, there's werewolves out here. Yeah, and yeah. he kind of was like very uh, flippant too, like, "Yeah, there's werewolves," like you know. Yeah, like he's as a like, matter of fact, very yeah, just just kind of you know said it like it wasn't like you know he didn't lean in and go, you know, there's werewolves out here, you know. It was a dark and stormy night, you know. He didn't do all that, you know. And uh, the the older generation was nearly gone now. They had talked a lot about these, you know, I talk about it on Vic's show too these creatures ha- having been around for a long time since the early days there was a legend that there was an old czech guy that lived out on the south side of town up on a hill in a house overlooking what's called the hole which is just like a, 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 a just a big hole but there's a baseball field there now and it's just like a big hole like like it's just the ground sinks into like a big like just a giant like a Looks almost like a meteor hit, you know, from like millions of years ago, and it's just oh, like there's cool. a little, little, but it's, it's a baseball like field a pit. there. Yeah, it's like a pit, but there's there's a field there, and uh, people play softball, baseball there, but it does flood out sometimes. But his house supposedly overlooked the hole, and for years there was stories that this guy was a, a shapeshifter, and that his wife was a witch. And then I heard other stories that they were both shapeshifters, and that that was the. Um, the origins of the story. Now I've also heard that there were, uh, the origins are the Hidalgo dogs, as they call them. There were mariachis. Now there was a mariachi that, uh, for the, for those of you who've not heard me talk about this on Dogman encounters or on, uh, I think I might've talked about it with Chris. I'm not for sure. But for those of you who haven't heard the story, the legend is that there was a mariachi who was very poor. He fell in love with a young girl and her family was wealthier. They were a Spaniard family, and he was poor. His family was second generation Mexican from Mexico. And uh, he, her dad was like, absolutely not. You're not going to be with this bum, you know. And so he uh, made a pact with the devil. Mm-hmm. Um, did some sort of magic, basically, long story short, and became a uh, a great musician and became like like he was... Awesome, you know, and people wanted to hear him play, and he played for her. She fell in love with him, uh, but then something happened tragically, and then he uh, lost her because the devil always gets his due. Then you know, he came and was like, you know, yeah, you there's had a her. Price for everything. You know, there's a price, and you had her. You, you know, I kept my end of the bargain as far as like you know, specifically you having her, but now you don't have her anymore, and now you're cursed. You know, I never said you'd keep her. Yeah, exactly. So he's cursed to become a uh, a black dog that walks the streets. Now, I did have some friends that saw 
these black dogs walking with someone. And I'll get into that in a minute. Well, what happened though was that when his friends found out that he had that ability, he told them how he did it. So they went and they did the same magic ceremony or went to the same witch or whatever it was that turned him. Um, the the legend that there's different versions, like of all legends. Mm-hmm. One of the most prominent is that the, the the lady from from the Czech lady was the one that was the witch, and she actually gave him the spell, put the power on him because his his uh, aunt had told him. I wanted to be beautiful, and this woman gave me the power to be beautiful. And he, and so he went to the Czech lady, and she made gave him that that ability, and then he made a deal with this demon or devil, whatever it was, and became a uh, a dog. Um, and when he when he died or whatever or was whatever he disappeared, um, he's now this eternal demon dog, this black dog that roams around. And the same thing happened to his buddies, his two of his buddies that were uh, musicians. They wanted to be great musicians and be like him. Okay, so they didn't. Okay, that yeah. And so they went to him. They went to him, and he told them how he did it. And then, but then, when like I said, when the time was up, they were all taken, um, and they now are roam roaming around as these humans in dog bodies, but they're very like ethereal. They can materialize. There have been many people, and Anthony, you know, our hometown has a lot of legends of these, you know. There have been a lot of people that me and Anthony know personally that have told us, point blank, we've seen these dogs. Some friends of mine from Austin witnessed coming to visit. They witnessed uh, a pack of these black dogs walking with a man down the street. Okay. Now, Diablo and Scorpion and Anthony have met these people. Anthony, you met one of them in particular uh, downtown, and he told you the story. They swear that this happened, okay? These dogs were walking with this man, and the man walked right up to their vehicle. He was Hispanic. He was a Mexican, a dark-skinned Mexican man with hollowed-out eyes, and he was walking like a puppet down the street. And it gets weird, <laughs> okay? And he walked right up to their vehicle and he looked into the back seat of the vehicle where one of the younger ones was, where he began to scream and freak out. And at that time, he was with six black dogs and uh, they all looked different too. They weren't all the same. And one of the bigger ones jumped up on the hood of the car and then ran over the top of the car and then ran off the back of the trunk. One of these guys that was there was a buddy of mine that I knew from high school when I was going to high school in Austin. And uh, he worked with my brother at a uh, at a, f- at a phone uh, center, and he told my brother the story point blank. The other guy was a guy I used to box with, who was on my Facebook, and uh, he saw it. And uh, this happened in front of a friend of mine who's now a chiropractor in Round Rock. This was this was crazy. This was in the middle of the town in Taylor. This is why <laughs> I don't walk around at night in that town. Whether the legends are true or not, you know, I stand by what I believe I saw that night was flesh and blood. But from what I'm told, these things can manifest as flesh and blood and then they become ethereal at will. So that's why, you know, I had the arguments with people who were just like, they're flesh and blood and that's all there is to it. Well, some of the people that have seen them around my hometown will tell you that they're flesh and blood and the others will tell you that they're not. They'll tell you that they are spirits yeah i mean here's the thing though even if they were why would you risk it you know why would you risk having just half knowledge you know i mean just just have a speculation of like have a belief of like anything is possible because you're not an expert on this subject there's not a a, a group that you can study you know in depth. you can't there's no way to study the entire species uh in a way that would give you conclusive you know evidence so the only thing you can do is believe like oh well from my experience this is what has happened but i can't speak for all dog men on this subject like that so i mean that's why we're very open of like yeah you know we, we don't know so it could be either way and what i would it's funny that you said like the the story of the mariachi guy if you were you know a dog if you were like transformed if forced into a dog but you still had you know your your the human wits the human wits you would and he also he would be <laughs> Very old, because this old. was supposedly from the 1880s. The easiest way for you not to get in trouble is if you had someone walking you, mm-hmm. you know? And especially if it's just, you but know. But there were six of them. 
Well, I mean, there was his bandmates, obviously. Yeah, but there, yeah, I guess it would be because I, I, the, the story was always three. Because I told the story, um, I think on Vic's show, where there were three of them near Hidalgo Park and three guys that I went to school with. Have you seen a mariachi band with only three? No, people? I'm saying like <laughs> the story was that there were only three of them. Yeah. But there were, there were, they, okay, now this story, I'll tell you, uh, for those of you who haven't heard it, I think I told it on Vic's show. But these three uh, kids were walking home from baseball practice. Now, I used to practice that same field as a kid in Little League. And they were walking home. These were uh, two of them were people I knew from school. And then the other one didn't go to our school, but he, he was from a neighboring town. And he was staying, and uh, I guess the summer or whatever, he was spending some time at the friend's house. So they were walking home, and they were just like, you know, you, you're walking your bike, and you yeah. have the glove on the bike and all that. You know? And so they heard noise coming from near the rail, rail the railroad tracks where that's been that back area where a lot of this stuff has happened. And there was this tall Johnson grass, which is everywhere in Taylor. And they heard talking in Spanish and they heard people, three people, four people, whatever, just having a conversation, you know, and they heard Spanish clearly. And uh, two of them were Hispanic and they, they were trying to make out what it was, was, was being said, but it was, it was kind of quiet, you know? And so they heard what they thought were, for lack of a better term, Mexican nationals that were in the weeds and they thought, oh no, there's some people there. Well, there, you know, there's always been legends and stories around our town about these things. And that wasn't the first thing that came to mind. They just thought it was people. But then they see this head, black head of what looked like a, a big wolf stick out from the, the, the weeds, then dart back in. Then it just leaps out onto the, ro- onto the road and stands right in front of them. And it turns and it looks at them and it smiles like a human. And then another one leaps out on the road, then another one. There were three of them, and they were so big that they they almost stretched across the entire road. Now I know Anthony, you've heard this story uh, many times, and uh, this is a, a very uh, popular story. There, one of them looked in their in the kid's direction and smiled and kind of made a smirk, and then it turned and it opened its mouth and spoke Spanish to the other two wolves. At that point, one of them stood up, like literally, like they heard a crunch. And then a snap, and then it stood up, and it was on two legs. Like, was it popping? Yeah, not not. You know how you hear the three pop, that pop, pop, pop. We you've already you've already heard people say that many times. Yeah. Right? But they heard that like a, a crunch, and then a pop is what they described. Stand up on two legs, and then it walked across the road, smiling, looking at them. Now they were kids. Yeah. So you can imagine the terror and the fear that was going through their, you know. And just then, a truck turn, was turning. Um, I know the the road. I'm not going to give the name of the road, but it turned and it went. It was it was turning onto that road. And so those three creatures jumped off the off the road and went back into the weeds on the other side and ran through the weeds, going uh, back toward the outside of that of the uh, baseball field. So that is that story, and they were terrified, you know, and so they began to run and, and ride, their, you know, bikes ride and their bikes and whatever, and one of them didn't have a bike, so he was just running, and they think that only because that truck turned and went down the road is the only reason that they, uh, you know. Left? Yeah. That's weird. That That's kinda... that story. So, you know, there have been legends of these stories for a long time. Now- I don't, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable talking about what this person had told me for years and years. I just wanted to like, not. I just, I wanted to say it. I wanted to talk about it, but I, you know, I didn't want to say anything when the guy was alive because somebody might put two and two together. Oh, the story, the first story. story, Yeah. Yeah. And then, but that's where these legends come from. A lot of these legends. Now I did cover a case, you know, that, that was, I did on Vic's show about a woman that, that was having her son was being visited by a, uh, they were living in a house that had a lot of paranormal activity going on. Mm-hmm. He was seeing a shadow man, but there was this wolf type creature that was coming to the window and tapping on the window and, and he would draw it and talk to it. And, uh, one day she was walking down the hallway and this happened outside of my hometown and it was reaching in through the window. Trying to grab Yeah. And the kid was just oblivious to it, trying to be friendly with it or whatever. Yeah. And she screamed and it looked up and it snarled at her. And But I guess the kid had never seen that aspect of it. So it scared him at that moment and it, he jumped down. 
The one thing I'm going to say about this, uh, there are researchers out there who go out and think that these things are completely flesh and blood and that they know all about them and that they can get them to roll over and do tricks and whatever. I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. I mean, there are a lot of researchers that are 100% convinced that they are a supernatural creature. And then there are people that are convinced that they are physical. I don't believe that they are all flesh and blood. But by the same token, I don't believe that they are all spirits running around either. Yeah, and like I said, there's no evidence of either. So you can't make a claim you about can't, it. You can't. And so I get into fights with people because I, what I saw looked very flesh and blood. but. That doesn't mean that everybody's experience was like mine. There are a lot of people who claim that these things just vanish. People claim that they're well, in their house and then they're not. Vic and me talk. Uh, I think Your wife? The, yeah, my wife. I mean, the interview that me and Vic did when he came on our show, the discussion we had with him, I mean, I think that we touched on it briefly, but I know that me and him have talked about it on his show. They, there was a case in L.A. where uh, – or it was San Diego or L.A., one of the, one of the two. There's so many of them that run together. That this thing had, there was no sign of forced entry, but there was a sign of forced exit, which is also like the Serbian story, you know, where something went into, they, like they could tell that it, it was inside. They don't know how it got inside, but they know where it exited. Flesh and blood and spiritual? I don't know. I can't say 100%, you know, one way or the other. Another strange theory that has been proposed is that these things could be literally flesh and blood creatures and when they die they become ghosts i mean yeah i mean i I think i talked to that with, with nelly a little bit about how there's i mean we have human ghosts and we have you know animal ghosts so why not the possibility of th- these creatures you know also having a, a a way to stay you know past their own death you know i mean it's not an impossibility for me that it does make sense if you know, because I do believe in ghosts very heavily because I've seen them mm-hmm. and I've had experiences myself. So if I can accept that and I do believe in dogman, then I can accept that there's a, there's a possibility that you know there would be a dogman ghost. Yeah. And that a lot of people see what see something like that. So I guess that being said, I, I just I don't know where I stand 100%. And uh, I, I'm kind of like on the fence with when it comes to that. I'll give you a story, another one, and we'll do another one. This one was from uh, Maine. And this guy, it's it's not a real long one, it's brief. But the guy said that, that they had a, they gave a summer home that was on the coast and that they had what he called a spectral dog man. But he said that there was a legend of a werewolf that roamed around in the woods. And it was in that area where his house was. And he claimed that th- that this thing would come up to people's houses, look in the window that it, it pets had gone missing. You know, this, this stuff was going on back in the fifties or whatever. Then it stopped. The activity stopped. There was no more stories about this creature. Like it, by, by the time the 1970s came, nobody had, was even talking about it. But during the summer months, at least two or three times a week, People would see from the, from their houses, they would see this, what looked like a wolf walking on all fours on the beach. And it, and it uh, would stand up on two legs and then walk, kind of half jogging. And it looked just weird. I mean, this guy claimed he witnessed it. And he said that it would just, just slowly fade away. Now, if the stories are to be believed that there was a flesh and blood creature running around in those woods, yeah. doing whatever those creatures do and then then eventually that the the stories about it stop and then this phenomenon begins is it a ghost a werewolf ghost i mean how would you classify that yeah i mean once again it's just like we don't know anything and it's so weird that you know we we do get all these stories and then like especially being we especially now that we started this we get a lot more stories from all over the place so we get like these different accounts so like we can say that we we can't claim it as one or the other because there's just too many people that come to us with stories from one way or the other and to me that sounds like a, a ghost i mean obviously it, it's if it's um you see activity for a little bit of it going around and all of a sudden it stops and all of a sudden it comes back but now that it comes back it's, it's in a different way i mean 
it's roaming its own hunting grounds. Like we did a story not that uh, a couple episodes ago about the the shadow lady who lived in the hotel, and I mentioned how you know it might be that she's just doing her old habits and she's stuck to the place because it's her habit to be in that area during certain times. And then, uh, since she died in that area, then like she's just there and then redoing like, what she's always done. And why not this thing doing the same thing? He's just mm-hmm. roaming his, he's patrolling his hunting grounds. So would it be a dogman ghost? It wouldn't be a werewolf. I so it's a bit of both. I mean, obviously <laughs> it's you know it is the the creature, but then you're also looking into the uh, spectacle or the spiritual aspect of it, of it of passing away and turning into this. Now. Well, one of the problems too I'm, I'm I'm running into is that people are afraid to talk to come forward about transformation stories. Now, mm-hmm. I do have a couple, but but nobody's really wanting to talk about it because it's so it's met with so much derision in the dogman community that uh, when someone speaks about it, I myself have been apprehensive about talking about some of these. One I told that happened, you know, near the lake. Yeah. Um, but you know, you really don't, you, cause you, you don't want to be attacked. You don't want to have people come after you because you said something that didn't fit the narrative because there are so many people that are convinced a hundred percent that dog man is a species of animal. And they might not be wrong either. We're not, you, know, you can't claim it as one or the other, but that you can't say 100% that that's what it is. Yeah. But these people, there, there are a lot of people that want to believe that. And there are all these people who want to believe they're benevolent too. I I don't get that. I, I I'm not getting that from the, the the stories that I'm getting, the witnesses. I'm not really getting many uh, stories. I'll be honest. I've gotten a couple, and I've I'm not going to tell them on the show because they don't they don't. It's not because I want to scare people and tell the scary ones. It's because I don't really believe it. Uh, yeah. One was a guy that <laughs> I've mentioned before, and I eventually had to block this person and not, you know, saying that one of these dog men was so friendly it wanted to mate with him and all this stuff. So that was that was that one. And then the other one was just the, a woman that claimed that she's out there playing the flute to them and that they're all working together in harmony and that the Bigfoot show up and they all have a big picnic and I mean it might be possible, but here's the thing. We uh, have a don't... we have a responsibility as, you know, to give you the information and we don't want to give you the information that they're friendly and something, and you go out, and something bad happens, and something, someone gets hurt, which I yeah. believe, you know. And, and why and, and, test the fate of you going out there? Why, why uh, risk it? You mm-hmm. know, knowing what I know about these creatures, and then knowing about the the people that were supposedly turned into Swiss cheese, you know, I've always felt like they're not good, and 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 at least the ones around where I'm from, they're not. There's not. There's not a good thing about them. They're not. Uh, it's not. Um, There's a malevolent area around. A yeah, malevolent it's a malevolence feeling. about them. Now, the one I saw was flesh and blood, and I've had people try to dissect what I saw and try to tell me, okay, them not having seen what I saw, and not having seen the 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 behavior of this thing, and trying to tell me what I saw and what it was doing and how it was doing it, and that, and it makes me mad because you weren't there. Yeah, you didn't see what we saw. Okay. You didn't see the behavior of this thing. Now, if it was just trying to leave me alone and not mess with me, then why did it feel the need to come and try to cut me off from the house that I was heading to? Yeah. Why did it need feel the need to follow you to yeah, the house? Yeah. Why did it try to come up to the fence and, and like, you know, why was it even, oh, it was curious. Really? It was curious. Well, you know, it, it, the thing is, it didn't feel like that to me. It felt like it would have and was going to attack. It was looking for an opportunity. An I opportunity. Think. That's the feeling I That's got. And people say, oh, that. it's just fear, whatever. Well, fear is what keeps us alive, first of all. Yeah. It's not always a bad thing. But when I saw the thing sitting in the ditch, it did not have to get up out of that ditch and go run and, and then and then cut back and try to, like, cut us off. It could have just went about its way. But it did not do that. The fact that it stayed means that it, it, it means one of two possibilities. One, it could have been curious, but the fact it followed you all the way to the house, so I doubt that's it. If it was mm-hmm. curious, it would not. It would have watched you from afar. You know, it would have. It would have let you go on your way and stalked you in a way that, you know, in a different way. And number two, you guys are kids. It's dark out. It's already late. It, you guys are easy prey. Yeah. And all it's looking for is an opportunity to snatch you up. You know, yeah, and and then talking to my sister's ex boyfriend about what he saw, mm-hmm. 
talking to uh, the neighbors that, that had seen something, you know. I mean, it, it just there were too many people that had seen my great aunt talking about it. Uh, my grandparents, you know, having on my dad's side, having said that they saw one. I mean, th- there were just so many people from so many different walks of life, and that, that had that had come forward. Uh, my friend who saw what he saw. I mean, um, the they, show that we just watched, the show that you and uh, we watched not that long ago that Ken was on. Which remember? one was that? Remember, it was with the 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 people who went fishing, and uh, oh no, no, Ken wasn't on that one. That was. Uh, what was that show? I don't remember. It well, was I thought some he was show. on it for a little bit. No, no, no. That no. was a different show. I don't know. There were, there were two different shows. Oh, well, I thought he was on that one. I don't remember the name of the show, but yeah, the the guys, I think that was, I was given the uh, story by Michael Moran mm. from Cryptid Squad, and I, I was told, I think it was Michael that told me to go look or something. I don't remember how it came up, but somebody somebody posted it. Maybe it was Dana Ortega. I don't know. There's so many people that, 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 that cooperate with us in these groups and and listen to the shows or whatever you know and then i don't i don't know the, those guys were chased into the water yeah into their boat yeah they they, they you ask them i mean they they were terrified you can tell when they're telling the story that they're not talking about these things in in like a peaceful light or that 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 anybody can go out there and try to just reason with it or try to be the dogman whisperer and negotiate with them and try to make them behave or whatever. These people are just nuts that do that. That think that they can do that. You know, they don't know what they're dealing with. They really don't. They they their legends maybe from where you're from in your hometown in your area, maybe that's how they are. Yeah. But, you know, in my neck of the woods, that's not what's been the case. I mean, they're not like being friendly and nice and and being cool. You know, I I don't know. I mean, that that's just, you know, my thing, you know. I'm not real interested in, in dragging a bunch of people from all over the country to come and mess with people in my hometown. I don't want people in my town becoming angry, being angry with me for talking about it maybe because then people start going around and messing, you know, from, from out of town. Yeah. They have enough problems already with the out-of-towners already, so they're already starting to be very uh, closed, you know, toward uh, out-of-towners. So they're already kind of like, you know, there's already kind of a rift that's developed there mm-hmm. between the locals and those, the people that are showing up there that aren't from there, you know, and, you know, cause the, the, the mass that is Austin is spreading out into the outlying communities and it is just becoming, Austin's like on its way to being the ninth largest city, I believe they said. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's ridiculous. unreal. The traffic it's ridiculous. Is, the traffic and there's so many people and then everywhere. But the outlying communities were always very rural. Yeah. And there was a very distinct boundary between Austin and the outlying communities. Now you drive, it goes from Austin, Flickerville, Round Rock. You're all, it's all one big city. Mm-hmm. You go from Round Rock all the way to pretty much, uh, I'd say Kyle. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, yeah, it just goes. The, the, we're just, it's constantly which is Which is outside of San Marcos, you know. And then the next city over is New Braunfels. The next city is Schertz and then Austin, San Antonio. It's almost like one long city from Austin to San Antonio. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like 80 miles of just city. And so you got all this rural, you know, whatever that's being exposed now. And like I said before, what was once the bush where you would go hunting is now people are living. So people are going further and further into the bush to go and and they're running into these creatures. That would give credence to the, to the, to the idea that they are flesh and blood. However, I do think there is a supernatural element to that, them that I can't explain. The one that I saw didn't do anything supernatural. It did give off a malevolence. I did feel like it was angry because I saw it. I did kind of feel that. I've analyzed it and, and meditated on it, and I, I don't. The only thing I can think of is that this thing saw an opportunity, and I did not. I did not get the feeling that it was friendly, or if I could have done something to change its behavior, as some idiots would say, would have you believe. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that there's nothing I could have done. I couldn't negotiate with it. I wasn't going to be able to reason with it. It wasn't something that was going to to alter its behavior because of my behavior. I think it was just going to take an opportunity and And as far as you're concerned, you know, this thing might how do we know it they don't have their own rules of like don't be seen? Mm-hmm. How 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 do we know that yeah. they're not very strict about like don't be seen? So as far as it was concerned, it might be trying to silence silence. Be quiet, you. make you quiet, yeah. yeah. Because, you know, if they are as smart as some people claim they are then killing a human is going to be pretty easy to get away with because it's going to be chalked up as a dog attack or a coyote attack yeah. or whatever. Especially late at night, two kids, mm-hmm. two young kids. It wouldn't be somebody's dog got loose and chewed them up. Whoopie do. 
You know, I mean, it'd be a tragedy, but heck, you know, right there in Thorndale, a woman was killed by a pack of dogs. Thorndale's right side of Taylor is not very far, you know, I mean, I think it's odd too that, that I have heard stories out of Taylor, Michigan, Taylor, Mississippi, and Taylor, Texas about Dogman. Yeah, that is kind of odd. That is that is weird. <laughs> that is a very weird synchronicity. I don't know what the connection is to the town's name. Maybe those towns, of course, they were all founded by people with that last name. Now, it's here's one thing that I've wondered is maybe they were all connected to some sort of, this is getting out there, okay, folks, I'm not saying this is what I believe. This is just what I came up with one day while I was thinking about it. And, and uh, me and you, Tony, and uh, I think uh, Anthony and Scorp were talking. And we thought, you know, what if the connection is that the, all these towns, you know, because my brother lived in Michigan for a while, and he said that Taylor, Michigan had a lot of weird stuff. What if it is that these towns were all founded by the same bloodline? Going back to, like, England or the yeah. old country, whatever, their distant, name. Distant, distant relatives Distant of each relatives, other. and maybe they were werewolves. <laughs> I don't know. And maybe that they settled in in these different places and had some sort of weird bloodline and they, you know, and it carried on. Maybe they were all connected in in, in some way into a family going back to the old country. I have no idea. The connection to the Czech lady, you know, a lot of that stuff I think is all just rumor. I really do. I've looked into some of these stories and they don't really go anywhere. It's just stories that have been passed around and told. And people are like, oh, this is this is what's happened here. Like I told one story on Vic's show, I believe, where my friend's grandmother had come out of uh, this place called Taylor Cafe. And <clears throat> right there in, in the rail yard, there was a, a railroad car where she saw a guy that, that when she went into the, to the, to the cafe, he was, it was like a, a wino, as we called it. And it was a place called The Line. Now it's called the line because back in the in the old days it was segregated. Taylor and South Taylor was was predominantly black. It was African American, yeah. with some Hispanic going that lived in the uh, southern most southern part of it. And then there was the the black community, and then going right across the little uh, overpass or whatever you want to call it, the go, the the little bridge, the round bridge that goes over the uh, uh, railroad tracks. Then right there, there was a, a an Arab Hispanic uh, neighborhood, and the rest was white. Now that was that was, but that when you come over that bridge going to the south side of Taylor, it was called the line. Anthony, you know that going back in when you were a kid, it disappeared completely. Um, the the whole area was really bad when you went to that part of Taylor. It was a bad bad area, but there was an initiative that took place back in the nineties called Take Back the Night. And Taylor residents literally went out with bullhorns and protested and yelled and screamed at these drug dealers in these crack dens, and they had them taken out by the police, and then they bulldozed them. Am I making that up, Anthony? No, that's an absolute truth. Now, I had a couple people tell me that when they did take these places down, that they found in the back of some of these places, like Black Magic, like like somebody that was messing with certain type of types of stuff. I heard that Santeria, you know, like type stuff. I'm not saying that's what it was, but that that's what it made me think about, you know. Those could be rumors, legends, whatever. Anyways, th- that place it's called the Line, and Taylor Cafe is right there, facing the rail yard, right, right there by the Line. And a friend's grandmother, who's African American, she came back out of the Taylor Cafe, and she told us a story when we were like teenagers, when I was like a 17, 18 year old kid, and uh, she said that she saw. What what was the man that was dressed in the in the regular clothes? Like you know, he was dressed in like a a suit. Like or a, a, no, she said he was dressed in a uh, a shirt, like a regular plaid, like a blue or something shirt. I don't remember exactly. A bluish red shirt, button up. Yeah, button up shirt, and that that he looked like a wino, and he was wearing like like khaki pants and and work shoes, like he was a worker, and he was just sitting there drinking you know booze or whatever, a wino. You know, but I, but a, somebody who was dressed like a worker. Yeah. And when she came back out, that that she saw, she swore that she saw what was a wolf, with the the tattered remains of the clothes over its back, crawling up underneath the railroad car. There were also night watchmen going back into the sixties and seventies that at night had claimed to have seen something that looked like a giant baboonish looking uh, monkey thing come running out of one of the railroad cars. And then run out through the, out of the rail, rail yard and, and into South Taylor near the cotton gin. They described it as a giant baboon-looking creature with a snout. 
with dog like legs. Now that sounds very much like a dog man, you know. I don't know what that is. I know that I heard stories of that, that, that and that some of the African Americans in that area had claimed that they had seen these things. Two people I know in particular that were the uncles of one of my friends that I used to play ball with years ago. They were they went up the street to the liquor store that used to be right there on the corner. I don't know. I think that's a just a convenience store now, right, Anthony? Yeah, but it was a liquor store, and they went up there, and they, you know, got their booze or whatever, and that they were heading back, going back toward the projects, and that this giant wolf-looking ape-type thing uh, ran out in front of them, mm -hmm. and then they ran to head home, and it, it turned, double back, and began to chase them. And I got a couple stories like that, you know, of, of the African-American community talking about it, you know. I don't know what that was. But, you know, you get these stories you hear as a kid. I mean, I, I heard a lot of these stories growing up before and after I had my encounter. Uh, one of the ones I talked about on Vic's show was uh, a buddy of mine's uh, grandfather. And his his grandfather telling me during at Christmas time when we went to get the tamales that the, he used to work on gems, you know, like a, like a, with stones and like precious stones and stuff. Oh, and, gems. I think like said gems, gems, yeah. So. And, and so, yeah. That could be two different things. That could be a greasy spoon eatery or a place where you get fit, or it could be stones. Yes, yeah, I should have, like, I should have, <laughs> I should have uh, clarified that a little yeah. better. Uh, yeah, so he was a gym. He worked on gemstones, like yeah, polishing yeah. them, whatever, doing whatever. Whatever it is they do, I don't really know a lot about it, but I know it's what he did. Cut them or whatever. And he had them in a in a uh, uh, a storage like behind his house. It was like a tin, like tin. It had tin, you know, it was made mm -hmm. out of tin. And uh, he had two, and he had another spot that he he used for killing goats. I mean, come on, people, this is a very rural community back then, especially in the early in the early nineties. Uh, but this happened, I think, in the late eighties. He had a place where he would kill goats, you know, and he would take the deer, and he would, you know, when they would kill, they would shoot a deer yeah. during deer season. They would take them or a turkey, and they take them back to this uh, shed, and they would tear it open, whatever, you know. And here's what's weird about it. One night, he heard something ripping and tearing uh, through the sh one of those storage sheds. He thought that they were after a deer carcass because like an animal, just yeah, like an animal that we're, we're messing with the deer carcass. Because he looked out and he saw what he thought were two wolves on on all fours, and he thought that they were messing with the one shed because they smelled like a deer carcass that they had they had uh, dressed. But he said that it had been already like almost two weeks. So it didn't make sense. Maybe they smelled it. Maybe there was still some awful there that they had smelled or something. But he, it wasn't, they weren't messing with that shed. They were trying to break into his shed where he kept his jewels and his tools. The the jewel, to the, like where yeah, he, the gems, yeah. The gems where he would do his work or whatever. That was weird. And he said that they, they literally, he watched them stand up on two legs and tear the, the, the tin, peel it back. And trying to get into the storage um, building. And of course, long story short, I've told the story on Vic's show. Um, one of them turns, sees him, and then they charge towards him. And there was a, a back room. A lot of these old houses, they had like this front room and then a back room. that really didn't serve a purpose other than as a mudroom or whatever. Yeah. And he closed the door, but then one of them broke through the glass and he fired a shotgun blast at it. Doesn't, from what I remember, if I remember, it's been so long since this guy's talked to me about this. I have it written down somewhere, but he said that he thinks he hit it, but it, it, it jumped back. And then, then there was one that was a little bigger than the other one. They were both about seven feet tall. He fell backwards. His wife grabbed him. They, they, they closed the door to the back, that back room and put a chair up against it. You know, terrifying night. Uh, police were called. Of course, they didn't find anything. You know, just the shed had been peeled back by someone with superhuman strength. Here's my question. If it was guys in masks, okay, how would they make themselves seven feet tall? How would they peel back a tin exactly. shed? Exactly. Unless they had a crowbar, which he didn't see anything like that. He said they looked like there were claw marks on the bottom of it. Now, he showed me Polaroids. I saw them. Like, I saw the Polaroids of the damage that was done to the shed. He had since repaired it a little bit, but you could still see where part of the tin had been replaced, and there was like a piece that was peeled kind of back. And when I was a kid, like I touched that shed, I remember touching it and 
and then hearing the story about it years later thinking, wow, that's crazy. Like that is literally these creatures had tried to break into that, that shed. If they are just dog men, they are just a, a flesh and blood creature that, that lives in the woods and comes in to eat animals and roadkill and blah, blah, blah. Then what business do they have trying to break in and stealing gems? Why are they trying to rob him? <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's now, not, this that's guy told me that at Christmas time, a week before Christmas, and he told me this, all right, in 1990, looked me dead in my eye, and he told me this is what happened, and he showed me the, the Polaroids. Now, I know this guy didn't just make that up. He didn't just lie to me and tell me a bunch of bull crap. You know, I, I know that he was being truthful about it. So, that, that, there's that. I mean, what use do they have with <clears throat> gemstones? You know, hum- we we have a use because they look yeah, nice. Unless unless they they know that there's an intrinsic value there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they they does that make sense? Like they would have to know that there's a value to these things. Yeah, I don't understand like what that was, but I have heard other stories of that. I've heard stories of these things like uh, tearing up people's vehicles, you know, hitting people's vehicles on the side of the road and stuff, and then just running off. Not really doing anything, you know, as far as like, because I guess it's almost like they know they can't really get to you, but they're just going to do it anyway. Mess with you a little bit. Yeah. And and, and then, but the problem with that is that people think, oh, you know what? They're not going to hurt you. They're just, just giant, oversized, mischievous raccoons and they'll get in your trash and they won't mess with you. That's raccoons bull, that's, can hurt you too. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying well, yeah, I know people aren't saying, really but... afraid of them, you know, like. It's 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 one of the things. Oh, they just want to cause fear. They want to do this. They want to do that. Well, people go missing, folks. I mean, that is the absolute truth. If the LBL stories be believed, I've never really visited it much or talked much about it. You know, it's one of those things where people believe that this could have happened. You know, and every time I think about the LBL, I think about you know what? I mean, I did have somebody tell me that he believed that these things were these these hobos of course these weren't this wasn't a family involving kids or anything so it wasn't this spectacular and no. it was just they were just people that were you know riding on the railroad cars and they have no idea to know where where the murders if it was a murder yeah they have no idea to know where it happened where the trains did they pull up and they were just in there they were told that that's what happened and they were told to and to never talk about it other than in that capacity that they found the remains of someone who had been killed on the railroad, on the road, railroads. And also, I just want to point this out. You don't get to hear the stories from those who don't get to, uh, who had a bad experience with them, who had a real, real bad experience with them. I mean, there's a lucky few that get away, but the ones that don't get away, you don't get to hear about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. People are like, <laughs> well, all the stories I hear is of them getting away, you know, being let go or whatever. Uh, yeah, because you're not hearing about the people that went missing and they're not they're not around anymore to tell their story. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to have... You know, these good encounters mm-hmm. when you have no one telling you about the bad ones. Yeah, the uh, park ranger that we yeah. talked about before from Arizona who had said that he found a campsite where people who had been chewed up. Yeah. Now, I mean, you know, when you think about that, and we haven't got into his stories before yet, you know. Yeah, there are times when these things just seem like they want to get away from you and they just want to be left alone or whatever. But there are just as many as them chasing people, trying to attack people. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you know, you 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 gotta you gotta look at it from a uh, practical standpoint is that you want to stay alive, <laughs> you know. I wouldn't recommend trying to give them gifts and appease them. You know, we had a thread that went on and on and on on Paranormal Roundtable, you know, and it got pretty. People started arguing, and then one of the trolls from another group started, you know, saying a bunch of mean stuff, and then it just got into a heated discussion and. Some of our loyal members, you know, got into it and, and it just, it wasn't meant to be anything but a caution Yeah, posted by Nellie about just how we should be careful with these things because we don't know what they are. And she, folks, does get, does read some of the encounters that I get. Yeah, she's, she's definitely one that, um, yeah, and she gets she, excited about it too. She's just as much as a fan of it all as you are mm-hmm. about like when she gets these encounters, she loves reading them and mm-hmm. she won't even like, uh, she, she doesn't even like being in the studio when we record so that she can listen to the shows. Yeah, but she does, he does read the encounters yeah. and she does hear the stories and I'll find, I'll get a good encounter and I'll be like, oh, check this out and I'll read it to her or you mm-hmm. or to one of y'all. And we'll go over it and be like, yeah, that's a good one, man. You know, we should, we should, but you get all these reports uh, from people and, you know, 
you can't believe everything you hear, everything you read, but you can kind of discern at least some of it, you know, and you know, you, you get a th- the, the same kind of theme going on, you know, that these things, they don't feel like, you know, that they're nice, you know, mm. and there are people that are like, oh, it's all driven by fear because people see them and it's real quick and they're afraid. And so that's why they believe that they're bad and whatever. It's it's not hard to figure out when something's trying to attack you. Okay. I mean, I really don't get how stupid someone has to be to not understand that they're being attacked. Mm. Now, I get if something's just coming up to your house and it's just messing around, maybe rooting around trying to find food like a hog, a wild hog or a coyote. That's one thing. But when these things are trying to get into your house. That's different. Yeah. And they're messing with your kids and they're killing your pets. I think that that's, it, we're done with the negotiating and trying to be uh, charismatic and friendly with these things or whatever. And because I don't really think we should be entertaining that in the first place. I mean, once again, it goes all like what you said with the lions. It depends on how hungry they are. Mm-hmm. When was the last time they ate? If they ate, you know, a deer carcass just a couple of hours ago, then obviously they're not going to really worry about you. But if they haven't gone eaten in about two weeks, you're prey. You have to realize that you're you're not a threat to these things, mm-hmm. you know, unless you carry a gun with you. And when they do kill someone, it's not like you're going to hear about it. Yeah. it, it it's not going to be in the newspaper. Werewolf kills person. And most will be a wild animal. It's going to be like a wild account or, or an unknown homicide or an unknown uh, death. Or not even unexplained, spoken about. Unexplained yeah. or not even spoken about. Yeah. So, yeah, you cannot go by what the statistics say. You can't go by, oh, there's no police report. Well, the police aren't being told, hey, file that under werewolf. Yeah. Because uh, other than I think uh, what is it Elkhorn? What's it called uh, up in uh, Wisconsin? What I think it's Elkhorn. Is it Elkhorn, Wisconsin? What's it called? I'm not familiar with Wisconsin. Uh, the well, the uh, Bray Road. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's Elkhorn. Whatever. Yeah, it's El- Elkhorn. I think. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, you're not really going to hear about a file things filed under werewolf. Yeah, because most people are going to be like, "What kind of police work is this?" Mm-hmm. A werewolf? They're not going to believe it. Yeah, there's no supernatural uh, department in, in the For the police, police force. department, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although me and you having worked with security for a long time, yeah. especially me, but you have for the last few years, you've talked to cops who've told you a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, they, they especially because they go to areas where, you know, people are afraid to go, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's always been a nightmare of mine as a security guard to experience what that night watchman has experienced and come across something like that you know yeah but they actively go and search for it yeah yeah well folks uh we're going to continue this discussion in another episode but for now that's uh that's my my dog man uh stuff i wanted to talk about and thanks for joining us yep yeah, we are going to talk about some other dog man stuff uh some updates on the hernandez ranch yeah. some stuff that's going to be coming up but uh, I appreciate you uh, tuning in and listening to me ramble about stuff. Our thoughts and just... Dog man <laughs> stuff. And, and uh, we don't want anyone to have, like, these heated discussions, you know, in the, in our YouTube comment section. Like, don't attack anybody for their views or don't do not don't do anything like that. Just uh, have a discussion about it uh, however you want, but make sure to be real friendly about it and, and not come into a position of anger when you make those comments because we don't want... You know, we joke around saying, like, oh, you're going to attack me or you're going to attack anyone else. But the last thing we want is our fans turning on each other, you know? Yeah, because we don't want that. We don't want everybody arguing and fighting and fussing. Mm-hmm. It's not It's not worth it. It's not what we want at yeah. all. So please, and, you know, everybody, uh, like and subscribe. <clears throat> Be sure to and share, whatever. But do me a favor and don't go messing around in my hometown and messing with people and bugging the locals because a lot of them aren't really interested in talking to the outsiders at this point, you know? Yeah, and they're retired as it is with what they have to deal with. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of them are just like, you know what, where are you from? And then get out of here, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hipsters are pretty much ruining that town. But uh, anyway, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I'll let you go.